Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita and I have our second to last summer candle. And it is a rather, I don't wanna, I don't think it's an old candle from Kringle, but it's definitely one that's been around for two or three years. And that is Desert Oud and it looks like this. It's a really kind of, simple but stunning color combination there. Um, and I have a three wick, and this is one of the soy blends. So they don't sell the soy blends anymore. Um, and as you can see, I've got a considerable amount of discoloration, and also, I don't know if you can tell, but there was a little bit of sooting too, although I'm not seeing as much of it now. Um, so, I, I'm not going to review the soy blend because they don't even sell it anymore. And so this is primarily going to be kind of a fragrance review. I did let it go one burn a couple, like maybe an hour longer than I should have. But to be honest, the soy blends didn't perform all that well in terms of it being a very clean burn. Um, and I think that's why they were pretty quickly discontinued. I also don't have a lid on this because the lid broke. There was a period, I wanna say maybe two years ago, year and a half ago, two years, where Kringle was having a lot of problems with lids. They were breaking, they were like too loose, and it didn't matter which ones. It was the metal ones, it was the, the glass apothecary ones, all of them were having major issues. For the most part, that has cleared up, so that's a really good positive for Kringle. All right, so Desert Oud, um, it's been around a bit, and I think actually it was one of the first candles that I purchased from Kringle in like a larger format, and one of the first ones that I burned, so it's kind of special in that respect. I did not think I was going to burn it again. I thought it was kind of a one and done, and I wasn't going to do it again. I just didn't think it was like quite memorable enough. But then I ended up buying it again. And now I'm prepared to say that it's maybe even in my top 10 for Kringle. With a caveat being that I don't think this is a mass appeal candle. And I don't know if I can recommend it for like a general audience. Um, for a whole host of different reasons. This is kind of an idiosyncratic candle and it's kind of gotten under my skin, but I think that might be very personal. Um, this is a very, I mean, unique is a term that's just overused. It's a mysterious candle. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word either. It's a candle that is subtle, that is maybe overly subtle, but also powerful at the same time, which is a weird combination. There were so many times, especially in that first burn, where I thought to myself, this is like an overly simplistic candle. There's no depth to it. And on top of it, it's like a really light candle. So I just, I'm not gonna buy it again and I don't really understand why it exists. But then I was burning it this summer and I don't know, maybe it's memories, you know, because you can make scent memories with a candle and I didn't even realize I was making memories that first time, but maybe that's part of it too. However, I do think there is something lovely in the fragrance itself, especially if it's in your wheelhouse, if it's your kind of a scent. So let's talk about the notes. The notes are, and they're pretty succinct and also very helpful. So top notes are bergamot and cardamom, interestingly. Mid notes, jasmine incense and guaiac wood. And guaiac wood is very similar to, in fact, I think it is Palo Santo, which is a great like desert um, uh, wood. Base notes, oud wood, vetiver and cedar wood. And obviously oud is in the name, desert oud. I think there's probably a little bit more guaiac wood, Palo Santo in here than oud. Um, but you've got a lot of woods. You've got oud, you've got cedar wood, you've got guaiac wood. I'm not getting a whole lot of jasmine, i.e. floral. 
I don't think there's a whole lot of floral in it. Caveat being though, that there is a perfumey quality to this, especially once it's been burning long. Um, and that is a combination of the bergamot, which we all know is like a very standard formula, especially for men's colognes, to have a bergamot top note. And then when you've got incense, which is also kind of like a men's leaning kind of thing, where you've got some spicy, musky kind of um, fragrance notes with the bergamot and then the wood and then vetiver, Honestly, if you were to look at these on paper, you would think to yourself, this is going to be an overwhelming candle and the chances of it smelling like a men's cologne and perhaps a very heavy and not very pleasant or interesting one, very high. And there's, it's no small coup that this candle actually doesn't go that direction. Like when you smell it, it does not smell like a men's cologne, which is actually very impressive. I do think there is a, a, a very top thin citrus kind of note, which is the bergamot, but it's very dry. It's not sparkling. It's not juicy. Um, super, super dry, which is great because it, it meshes perfectly with the dryness of the cedar wood, of the guaiac wood. Um, and so apropos because of the desert imagery, there's a real dryness to it, which I think is just right on. Um, so you would think with like the vetiver and the incense and the jasmine, it could go like in a really like damp um, kind of direction. And um, oud is a little bit resinous of a wood too. So if it had had like amber in it, for instance, like it could have gone that direction really fast and it doesn't this whole fragrance just stays so dry and because it's dry there's a coziness and a warmth to it that is so fantastic so it's got those light citrus notes on top which kind of brighten it um, and make sure that it like glows a little bit more there's a brightness to the whole candle and the whole desert scene and then there's so much like, it's a very wood forward candle. In terms of the spices, I don't think I'm, I don't know if I would call out cardamom. Let's just put it that way. And yes, I think there is some very faint incense. A very faint um, spiciness, but it is playing definitely like second tier to all of that amazing wood. So wood, little bit of spice, little bit of bergamot, but the overwhelming sense is of coziness and of warmth and of dryness. And there's something just a tiny bit exotic, but I would say very much in the genre of like Bath and Body Works Palo Santo maybe. And it's just interesting in that it's less of a base and deep candle, more than just a mid range with a tiny touch of some top range. And there's just something special about it. It has a, a je ne sais quoi quality to it. In terms of strength and throw, and this is part of the reason why it's easy to write it off. I really think that the strength and throw is in the five to six realm. Um, and if you can close it into an enclosed space, so I put it back in the master bathroom and I allow it, I shut the French doors and I allow it to kind of fill and it does fill the entire master bath, master bedroom. Like it fills the entire thing within like an hour or two. Um, so it does throw and I would say that it throws a little bit more than the strength is. So it may throw more like a 6.5, um, but it's, it's thin. But then it's powerful in that it's got the wood and it's got a perfumey quality to it, which makes me think that even though I want it to be a 7, I'm wondering if at 7 it would be overpowering, if it would lose its subtlety 
and its nuance and just become like kind of headache inducing. I don't know. I really don't. I hesitate to say that it's perfect as it is because there are so many times that I burn it and I feel like, come on, Sarita, like this is just not that great of a candle. It's, it's, it's not firing on all pistons. It's not strong enough. It's not complicated enough. It's just, it's like a good beginning of a candle, but it's not quite there. And then there are other times that I burn it and I'm like, this is brilliant. This is lightning in a bottle. I can't be without this candle. And maybe that's how I'll finish this, is I really can't be without this candle. Um, and it is in my top 10. But it may not be for everybody, and I completely understand that. I actually think this is a great transitional candle for the period that we're in right now. So late August into September, October. Um, this is a very nice guayac as in Palo Santo kind of note, but it's a very unique Palo Santo with the guayac wood. And Kringle uses guayac wood a lot in their Halloween candles. And as I've become more familiar with their Halloween candles, I was lighting this up this year and I thought to myself, some people might actually think that this is leaning into that Halloween kind of wood smell. It's reminiscent of it because they really use guayac wood a lot for those candles. And so for some of you, this might be a really great candle for before you light all those Halloween candles up. There's a coziness here that is evocative of fall. And with the guayac wood, there is something, if you're very familiar with Kringle Halloween, there is something kind of pre-Halloween about this candle without it being so traditionally or like stereotypically October or spooky or even fall-like. It's just really lovely. They marketed it for the summer. I don't know what season I would have brought this out in. I guess summer is as good as any. But I think, like I said, you could easily burn it here going into the fall. It's just really, really nice. I will always have one. It's obviously available in all the soy formats. I think this one could maybe use, I, I think three wicks is good for this. Um, and I would love to see them come out with like an all soy three wick or even a four wick if we get to that place. Yeah, I'll definitely link all the information down below. Um, and I kind of hope it sticks around because it's a sleeper and I think a really impressive one in its very quiet way. So there you have it. Kringle, um, a beautiful summer candle that is um, quiet and unobtrusive and also really strong and powerful. I'll catch you guys in the next one.